What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 19 of the Charge to the Top here with Hereford FC and today I have for you guys a live commentary against St Albans. If you missed last episode as always go check it out today. We've got a big game but before that just a quick recap of the results since the last game which was that game against Bryhouse. An interesting match to say the least. We kind of got away with one if I'm honest and well you'll see going through these results. We certainly didn't get away with one in the next round of the FA Cup. Anyway, we actually bounced back immediately from that FA Cup win with a 4-0 win against Hemel Hempstead. A good result. They didn't have a shot on target. They were very inefficient, I guess is the best way to use. And as you can see here, Ote and Keenan Bennett's getting the goals for us. A brace for each of them. And uh, well, that game marked our first clean sheet of the season, which is always good to reach. And well, following that, we immediately got another one, this time against Dartford. A 3-0 win uh, against Dartford, a team who are predicted to do fairly well in the division this year. They were um, down with the bookies to be in the playoffs this year. At the moment, they're a little way off that pace. Anyway, perhaps the result that stands out the most is next. A 3-0 defeat against Berry Town. Our curse in the Cups, well, it continues, doesn't it? Uh, and as you can see here, Berry Town running out victors. They were the better team. They played better football. They are a significantly smaller team than ourselves, but at the end of the day, they deserve to win this game. They, they turned up and we certainly didn't. And that was really bitterly disappointing, of course, with that result, kind of our, our curse in the Cup continues. We are really not doing well when it comes to Cup competitions so far on this save. Anyway, the next game, a third clean sheet to row in the league, actually. This time, just the 1-0 win. We actually hit the woodwork four times here against the Eastbourne Borough. As you can see, Joe Willock, the man getting the crucial goal, of course, formerly of Arsenal, joined us after a year out of football. And uh, to be honest, this guy, he's had a fairly good start to his time at the club. A 7.23 rating in the league, on average, and uh, that in three appearances, of which, as you can see with this game, he did get a goal which proved to be very, very crucial for us. Anyway, the last game we played in this run of fixtures against Havant and Waterlooville, it finished 1-1. Um, they scored very early on, and actually we were applied almost immediately, and you thought it, we might be on for a cracker. Kind of as things turned out, it just didn't really transpire into that. 1-1 how it finished. Perhaps something of note to kind of notice with this game is the fact that I decided to play a, um, a, a different formation. We actually played a 4-2-3-1. I wish there was a screen that just showed our formation so I could show you how we lined up. By co oh, formations. It's a good screen to find that one. But yeah, you can see here how we lined up. So it was kind of standard, really. Uh, the exception really being the fan that, fact that Malik uh, Hamilton came in as a kind of centre attacking midfielder for us. Didn't really shine in truth. He had an okay game, I guess. Um, but the experimentation uh, with the 4 2 3 1 is going to be put on hold because, well, going into today's game. I feel like we need to be playing a system that we know works and, well, the 4-4-2 is kind of tried and true. So anyway, today we're taking on St. Albans. I did say last episode I was going to do the game against Maidstone, but as you can see at the moment, the team predicted to finish top of the league in 12th. They've been some way off the pace. And while looking at the league table here, you can see ourselves and St. Albans really battling at the top of the table. We both have identical records. Um, kind of, quite interestingly, we edge goal difference ever so slightly, but actually ourselves and them fairly evenly matched and I think this is going to make for a good game. You can see at the top of the table Western Supermare currently unbeaten. We do play them in the not too distant future so they may well be the team we take on next episode. Um, so yeah these games could prove to be pretty crucial. We have also got the game against Bromley coming up although I don't think we'll be live coming that one as well. So yeah let's see how we get on today. It's going to be tough, it's going to be tricky. You can kind of see here that win against Eastbourne was obviously good and against Hemel Hempstead. The fact we drew against haven't a little bit disappointing because they are in 21st. They're not the greatest team in the world. Anyway, in terms of our team and what's been going on, we actually have a tri trialist in the club at the moment. It's this guy, Josh De Silva, uh, formerly of Arsenal. He looks like a good centre mid. The issue I kind of have with him is his attributes are good, but he doesn't really suit any role, <laughs> if that makes sense. He, he looks like a pretty good player, but every position I kind of look at him in, there's just gaps in his game when it comes to his attributes. He's got a really nice distribution, but they don't really you know, tick the boxes for any one role. And as a result, I don't think we'll be offering him a contract, if I'm honest. So anyway, the team going into today's game has a little bit of kind of change around, and that due to two injuries. Currently, Danny Smith, who's out on loan, is injured. Um, the youngster, not great for him, but you can see he's doing okay on his loan so far. Two assists, a 7.57 average rate for him. But George Johnson, who got injured last episode, still injured for today's game. Still out for four to six weeks with a broken toe. As a result, in today's game, Dan Preston going to be starting at centre-back. 
Anyway, to look at our team real quick, Joel Driscoll in goal. Uh, left back we go with the new kid on the block. Of course, if you missed last episode, you may not be familiar with him, Chris Owens. Uh, right back we go with Kane Smith, club captain. Pickett starts alongside Preston in the centre of the defence. Moving into the midfield, we go with Wright out on the left and Bennett's out on the right. We then have Duffman and Christy Davis in the centre of midfield. Christy Davis, of course, a player who came in with a little bit of a fanfare about him. Still not shining, I wouldn't say, but we've not been giving him a ton of opportunities. And you can see here, he is improving as a player. He does have some potential to reach. I'm hoping he will reach that. If we just look at his report here, you can see he has the potential to become... Um, well, a superb player in our first team. He's currently well suited to playing football in the league above us. And I'm hoping he can continue to develop because he does look like he could be a pretty good centre mid. And, um, well, hopefully he can start putting performances on the pitch. Anyway, for the target man, we have Quigley. Three goals in eight games for him, not too bad of a record. And Ote, up top, he's been, con been continuing to score goals. 14 in 11 games in the league. Really can't fault that been a top top player for us and if anything one of the big concerns I kind of have with our club at the moment is we are very very reliant on Ote's goals to get us by you can see I guess Anthony Wright and Bennett's chipping in with a few between them isn't too bad for wide midfielders but beyond that to, I mean Ote is our goal scorer and um, we are relying on him a little bit more than perhaps I'd like so hopefully he can stay fit and there's no injuries but at the same time I guess it's a situation we kind of have to monitor uh, in terms of the finances, we look fairly good, as you can see. I am still trying to add a few players, but there's not a whole lot going on in terms of potential players to sign. You can see the realistic players here. There's a few that kind of catch my eye, but no one who's kind of a game changer and no one really in a position that I'm desperate to improve. So anyway, let's get into today's game. It's away against St. Albans. It's going to be a tricky game for us, but you can see in the league, we are unbeaten in our last four games, which isn't too bad. For St. Albans, on the other hand, they won against Bath, they won against Chelmsford, they won against Welling. They did lose 1-0 against Western Supermare, however, but at the same time, they're going to be a pretty tricky team, I think, for us today. So yeah, we're going to stick with the 4-4-2. We've already done a rundown on the starting eleven On the bench, it's kind of the standard options. You can see Watkins, Clark at centre-back. We have Harris at centre mid, Willock who can play out wide on the left and right. We have Malik Hamilton, uh, the Canadian centre attacking mid who did start last game, going to be starting on the bench today. And we also have Sean Hambury um, as kind of our options on off the bench. Looking at how they're set to set up, looking like a fairly defensive 4-4-2. I feel like that maybe plays into our favour, but we'll have to see how we get on. Away from home, never going to be easy. Obviously, St. Albans in very good form. They've won their last few games by quite hefty margins. And they are a big rival for us in the league, and this is not going to be an easy game, I don't think. So we will have to see how we get on. And, uh, well, hopefully we can defend well early on, you know, not fall behind too soon. It's going to be tricky. Away from home, I feel like you always kind of go in knowing that it's important not to concede immediately and that it's really about just settling into the game and making the most of opportunities that come your way. And while we're going to be looking to do that here as Ote has the ball, holds it up nicely. Keenan Bennett's available out on the right. Christy Davis, of course, the new kid. The kid who I really want to see something for is coming forward with the ball. Nice interplay here. Now Bennett's with the ball. Pulls it back to quickly. That is a lovely, lovely goal. Beautiful passing. Joe quickly, sixth goal of the season for him. Good to see a player that isn't Ote getting on the score sheet. And that was some really, really nice build-up play. Ote involved in it. Keenan Bennett's with a fantastic run using that pace of his. And, uh, well, the ball through there. Great by Ote. The ball here by Bennett. So intelligent. Pulls it back and quickly latches onto it. Russell gets a strong hand, the goalkeeper, to it. Perhaps disappointing not to turn it round the post, but it finds its way into the back of the net. And while looking at the stats here, 65% of possession. You'd imagine St. Albans are really set up to play on the counter-attack with their two centre defensive mids, but right now we are dominating the ball and we're on the attack again here quickly. One goal to his name already, holding up the ball well. Tries to get into the box, he can't, but Ote might be there and it's a penalty. Tommy Fletcher for St. Albans, you naughty, naughty boy. Trips up Ote, denies him the goal scoring opportunity. We're going to have a chance to double our lead here from the spot. Who is it going to be stepping up for it? It's going to be quickly. Can he get his second goal of the game? He smashes it in. The keeper, even if he goes the right way, he just you don't stop that kind of finish. What an effort that was by him. Smashed into that top right corner and well, with an hour left of this game. He's going to be looking for the hat trick on that right peg of his. Bang. I mean, you won't see a better penalty than that. What a finish that is. And, uh, well, with that, we really have the momentum. And we are on the attack again here, although we do give away the ball. It's going to be important, you'd feel, for St. Albans that they don't go more than two goals behind here and that they maybe try and get a goal before half time. But we are coming forward with the ball again here. Owens inside to Christy Davis. Nice ball to Ote. Quickly looking for that hat trick, of course, now. 
Back with Christy Davis, a player capable of picking out a pass as is Ote, who tries to pick out Bennett, doesn't quite find its way to him, but still in possession of the ball here, still going forward, Duffman now, options out wide, Bennett is there, beats his man, can he get the ball in, he lays it out to Kane Smith, whips it in, Ote is there, no it's not Ote, it's quickly again, quickly with the hat trick, how quick was that? A 15 minute hat trick for the man, 3-0 up, I thought it was going to be Ote in the middle, but it wasn't, Ote actually dashing towards the near post, doesn't quite get on it, quickly, he leaps like a salmon, the diving header, brave in as you like there. Webster goes to lash it clear, quickly intercepts with his head, denies him it, and well, if there was a time to turn up big and answer the criticism I've had of Ote being kind of a one-man show, you'd have to say quickly he's answered those doubters because he has put in a fine, fine performance the target man. That 11 heading and 13 jumping reach coming up big for us. He's held up the ball nicely throughout this season in truth. He's been very kind of important in Ote's success that we've had kind of quickly the big man to really hold up the play for him and, well, create space for Ote to run into. But, well, today it's been the quickly show. And we're on the attack again here. Ball whipped in. Piggott. Bennett is there. It's 4-0. And against a team tipped for promotion and a team who are right up there in the early stages of the season, you'd have to say St. Albans. They've been underwhelming. Duffman, ball in. I think it's Piggott here who knocks it back across. It is. Good header by him and... Well, it's all down to Keenan Bennett's on his left peg. He's turned provider a few times this game. He now gets a chance to be goal scorer. And well, away from home, this game is turning into a rout against St. Albans. And they just gift us the ball again. Ote now bringing it forward. Poor clearance by the keeper. Keenan Bennett's running down the line. Can he get the ball in? He can. Quickly, he's there. It's the ball into right, the left midfielder. Quickly will get the assist. It's 5-0. Can you count it? Wow. What a performance this has been. I don't really know what to say. I was not expecting this. Big questions being asked of my players. You know, losing to Berry Town, not great. I was a bit concerned perhaps we needed to add a few more players in the summer. But with performances like this, we will maybe look back on these as games that defined our season and showed just how good we could be on our day. 5 nil up here. Duffman struggling a little bit for fitness. I'm going to take him off for Jay Harris, just because I'd rather keep him fit, if I'm honest. Looking across the rest of the team, Ote's not had the greatest of games. I'm actually going to take him off for Sean Hambry, give Sean a little bit of play time. Of course, a player who was imperative last season, Hambry, but with quickly emerging as kind of a natural target man. He's kind of been forced out the first team a little bit, but he's going to get a chance here to maybe make something happen. And unfortunately for us... We are going to concede here. Jack Green gets the goal for St Albans. It's going to be merely a consolation. It's their first shot on target for the entire match. And, well, it's just a bit of a shame, really. Clean sheets are something that we have struggled with during our time here at Hereford. We've had a few in a row in the, row in the league, um, kind of running up to this fixture. In fact, three in a row. Unfortunately, we're not going to have another one today. And, well, there's ten minutes left. I feel confident at 3-0 up. Even if they would score again, we can hold on to this. But I am starting to get... A little bit, what's the word? Not anxious. I'm trying to get. I'm starting to get a bit agitated by the fact we are having these games where we dominate early on and then we throw it away. Of course, if you watch the first game of the season against Sutton, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This kind of performance isn't an oddity. We do have one sub left to make here. I'm not going to make it because we're on the attack here. Quickly to Christy Davis, to Harris. Back with Christy Davis now. Inside to Quickly. Nice build-up play here. Beautiful ball through. Quickly pulls it back. Bennett scores. It's another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful passing goal. It's so beautiful, I've said it three times. The build-up play there, sublime. Great passing play. Nice little interchange. And, uh, well, it's quickly turning provider again. Christy Davis. What a ball that is through. Quickly. Doesn't have a lot of pace. Uses it to get there. Passes it across. Bennett's perfectly positioned to slot it away. It's 6-1 here, it is a rout and a half, and St Albans, well, for a team who have been in pretty good form and have been fairly solid defensively, they have really, really collapsed here. 6-1 it finishes at Clarence Park, St Albans could be scratching their heads and wondering what exactly happened. For us, on the other hand, we could be very, very happy with that result. That is the kind of performance which is actually going to see us move top of the table. Western Supermare losing 2-0 to Billericay. We move, move up into fifth. You can see going into this game, St. Albans had conceded nine goals in 11 games. They've just conceded six in one game, really destroying their defensive record. In terms of goals scored, we are firing home um, a lot of goals. You can see here, Bill Ricky, a team I believe we've already played right up there. Maidenhead, we've already played. St. Albans, we've now played. Sutton, we've now played. We've played a lot of the teams in and around us. Bromley, as I mentioned, coming up. Western Supermare on the horizon, and that will be coming next episode. 
But as far as we're concerned, it's another great performance against St Albans. Nice to put the record straight, particularly after the draw um, against Haven and Waterlooville. And uh, well, that result, top of the table, we look pretty good. And I mean, if we can keep performing like that, I'm going to be a very, very happy bunny. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. Hopefully you enjoyed as always. If you did, leave a like. It's greatly appreciated. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.